it's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Here's our host, Randy Wilburn. Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and today I've got a special episode for you. I'm here with Carlos Rosas, and Carlos is an individual that I met. He's become a friend somebody that I connected with just out of utility because I needed some help with my T-Mobile account. And Carlos came to the rescue. He brought to me, I was, I just had moved to a new office location for my company, Encourage Build Grow. It's also the site for I Am Northwest Arkansas down on Block Street in downtown Fayetteville. And they didn't quite have the fiber optic lines in properly. And I was waiting with one company that was supposed to install some lines and it just never happened. And so One day I reached out to some folks at T-Mobile and I got connected with Carlos. And the rest, as they say, is history. Carlos got me a hotspot. He made my life so much easier and allowed me to do business and and interact with people around the world from my office there on Block Street with this hotspot that he provided from T-Mobile. But that's not the reason why I had him on the podcast. I had him on the podcast because as we were talking and he met with me up in Rogers, at a Starbucks up there, as we were talking, he was telling me his story about how he got here to Northwest Arkansas. And it really resonated with me. We kind of came during similar times. We kind of came, you know, for, for simple reasons, but, you know, he just, when he shared his story with me, I was like, oh man, that, that is a great story. Maybe one day you could come on my podcast and we could talk about it. And finally, finally, after a couple of months, here we are sitting in front of each other, kneecap to kneecap, And we're going to have a conversation now. And I think you guys will benefit from this, especially those of you that are thinking about moving to Northwest Arkansas and and maybe are not fully sure about what to expect or, you know, what your experience is going to be like. You know, Carlos is Latino. I'm African-American. We're going to have a really interesting conversation here just to kind of talk about our collective experiences here in Northwest Arkansas. So buckle up. I think you'll enjoy that. Without further ado, Carlos, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Randy. Thanks for having me. I look forward to really discussing my experience, you know, how I got here and how I've, uh, you know, Northwest Arkansas has kind of become my second home, right? Or first home now, actually, because yeah. uh, originally moved here from West Texas. So that's what I kind of considered my primary home, right? For a long time. But now that I've been here for so long, right? Uh, I couldn't imagine living anywhere else. All right, yeah, no, I, I get that. And, you know, it's funny because I've lived all over. I've lived out West. Uh, I've lived in D.C. I went to school in D.C. I've lived in Atlanta. Atlanta is really the only other southern city that I've lived in. But there's something about Fayetteville. There's something about Northwest Arkansas that sometimes is hard to capture. And that's why I like talking about it. And that's why I like talking with other people that have also come here that aren't traditionally from Northwest Arkansas, because you have a different vantage point to consider when talking about this area and what it means to you. So. Why don't you just, I mean, you, you gave us just a really short cliff note version, but just tell us a little bit more about yourself and, you know, wh- why did you end up in Northwest Arkansas to begin with? So that's a great question. I actually ended up here by mistake, which is kind of a very interesting story. <laughs> um, so I was very young, ambitious about 10 years ago and, you know, I was working for a company and a very small town outside of Amarillo, Texas. I say Amarillo because nobody knows her for Texas, but it's interesting, you know, you mentioned about so many people kind of moving here and uh, how we're kind of becoming almost like a melting point, right? For different people yep. around the country. I've ran into a lot of people from my hometown recently. Have you really? Uh, yeah, I have. So it's been interesting to talk to them and kind of find out their story too. But I ended up here, honestly, absolutely by mistake, right? So I was living there in Hereford, Texas. I got a job offer with the company, a national company, and they kind of moved me around the country. I went to Iowa, Illinois, Kansas, Missouri. And the last stop I kind of got, you know, a little homesick. So I was actually going to go home and go back to West Texas. And um, the owner of that company actually called uh, an owner of a company here uh, that was eventually going to open up a location in West Texas and said, Hey, you should call this individual. Fantastic work ethic. And I got that call and I ended up moving to Pittsburgh, Kansas for about six months to help him until we opened up a business here in Northwest Arkansas. So 
I had never been down here even during that six month period. I never came down here to kind of look. I just, you know, was kind of very ambitious and didn't didn't really bother to to do my due diligence on where I was going, right? <laughs> so essentially what took place is uh, I came here in December of 2013, really had like one day to look for a place to live. But I think what one thing that astonished me was really just how beautiful it was, right? So before I ended up in West Texas, I grew up in Garden City, Kansas, and it, it seems very similar, but obviously Northwest Arkansas is a lot more progressive from an employment standpoint and entertainment standpoint. It's a lot bigger. So that, so I ended up getting that job offer here, opening up a car dealership for a local business owner here. And when I moved, literally the first time I saw this place was when I rented a house over the internet, right? So wow. I'm like driving into town. I'm like, wow, this place is so beautiful. Pulled into Crosschurch that came in from the north from Kansas. And I'm just like, wow, this is really nice, right? Yeah. And I think that's kind of what everybody gets surprised with when they first come here is really just how beautiful it is from the nature part of it. And just how new everything is. And it's right. very clean, right? Yeah. So that's how I ended up here. It's uh, totally by mistake. I ended up meeting my wife, you know, having kids here. And uh, the rest is history, like you said earlier. So it's been an interesting journey, definitely has. And, you know, during this, during that time period, right, I've, I've gotten my MBA. I was able to really successfully grow that business that I moved here for. And then uh, some situations kind of changed in my personal life. So I ended up working at T-Mobile. But, you know, I've tried to stay in this area just because I know it's going to be a fantastic place for me and my kids and to to raise a family, right? Yeah. So that's kind of been my story. It's all happened by accident. I mean, you know, by fluke because I didn't think I was going to end up here. I didn't even know where Arkansas was at. When I tell people, hey, I live in Arkansas, they're like, do you guys wear shoes there? Well, right. Yeah, we yeah. have shoes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all kinds of jokes. We have indoor yeah. plumbing. We wear <laughs> shoes. We brush our teeth. There's all kinds of funny jokes. So exactly. Yeah, no, I, I, I get that a lot. And, and it is this place is will grow on you very fast. Oh, yeah, it really will. Now, is your wife from here? She is. Yeah. Okay. She actually grew up here. Uh, so so she can tell you what it was like before, yeah. right? Like how, mm -hmm. how this area has really... People that are from here that have like 20 or 30 plus years under their belt are like, man, I remember when. Yeah. Yeah. You know? so, so she tells me all the time, there used to be just a lot of grassland, right? A lot of the buildings weren't up. Uh, very small, small town. And uh, she talks to me all about how that's changed, right? Well, because she went to high school here, uh, middle school, elementary school. I mean, she grew up here. What's funny about our story and how we ended up meeting is she actually moved away to Texas <laughs> and she moved back around the same time that I moved back. Okay. okay. And uh, we ended up meeting at a local coffee shop here in the area, but it's just kind of funny how we ended up moving back. You know, she ended up moving back and I ended up moving here for the first time and we ended up connecting after we moved here. I mean, it's uh, fate, I guess you would say, right? Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. I got to love that serendipity. I mean, those those things happen, you know? It does. So yeah. It really It's not does. just in the movies. No, it isn't. <laughs> it isn't. So now what did you study for, with your MBA? Did you did you have a focus or a concentration when you took that? So I did. I studied management. Okay. Um, so okay. I, like I mentioned before, I was running a company for a local business owner. So for me, it made sense. I was getting my bachelor's degree. I was doing finance. So I was doing a lot of underwriting for uh, auto loans. And then I just thought, hey, you know what? The next great progression would be going and getting my MBA, right? Just getting that well-roundedness and, and kind of touching on a lot of things. But for me, I've always kind of leaned into the psychological aspect of managing people. I think no matter what you do, you're going to obviously have to understand how to work with people, how to motivate people, because that's kind of the foundation of any business, right? So I focused and leaned into a lot of management. Now, I did also focus on economics and finance. So those were kind of my big areas. And I got to apply a lot of the things I learned in school in real life, which is very unique for a lot of people to say, because I worked full-time and I went to school full-time. Yeah. Yeah. How was that experience of, of doing both at the same time like that? So it's tough, right? So for the first, I would say four years I lived here in Northwest Arkansas, I really didn't go anywhere, right? right. Like, So I didn't really get to experience the area. It wasn't until after I finished school that I'm like, oh, there's an amphitheater where I can go to the concerts, right? <laughs> right there's a right, movie right. theater here. You so can I, breathe now, right, right? Exactly. Yeah. So it was a big sigh of relief. And that's really where I got to take in everything. I got to really go out and meet a lot of people. And I think another thing that I was really surprised by was just how nice everybody's been that I've met, right? Everybody's really welcoming. Uh, you're able to build relationships very quickly. Mm -hmm. and I think people are just very receptive. And I think that's still... That's something that's very unique, I think, to this area that people want to talk about. And I think people love being here. 
and uh, you never hear anyone talk negatively about living here, which is kind of unique because, you know, I've I've experienced that everywhere I live. Of course. Yeah. yeah. And, and you have. And, and it's funny. I mean, I feel that way about some other cities that I've lived in, too, whereas I know you could find the pluses and the minuses for any place. Right. right. I mean, and, and even even Northwest Arkansas is not immune to that. Oh, yeah. But I think overall. There's something about Northwest Arkansas that reminds me of kind of like that new car smell that just right. lingers and it stays with you. And if you can continue to take care of it, even a year or two down the road, when you get into that new car, it still has that new car smell. And that's how I feel eight years later after <laughs> after yeah. moving here. You know, I'm like, man, it's still I still like that new car smell here exactly. in Northwest Arkansas. So, well, all right. Well, well tell me this, because I'm really interested to learn how you pivoted from like working in the in the car dealership space, which is a is a much different space to moving over to to T Mobile and working with cell phones. So that's a very interesting conversation as well. So at the point in time, you know, I thought I was going to work in the car business for a long time. I was working on growing the business. It was very good. It's a people business, right? Yep. So and I think it's one of those forever business, very similar to the cell phone industry. People always need cars. Sure. Right? Obviously it's going to evolve and you know, we're moving now more towards electric cars, but I feel like that's always going to be something that's going to be there for customers. So for me, it wasn't something I planned. So it was just kind of very similar to ended up here in Northwest Arkansas. I was always a big fan when I was getting my MBA. I studied about T-Mobile, right? And that big turnaround that they had, John Ledger coming in and, yeah. and really uh, something that he said that really echoed to me. And I took that as a business lesson and applied that to the company I was running here is listen to your your customers, listen to your employees, they'll tell you how to win, right? And kind of creating a great culture where people love to go to work, they love what they do, and then you can win, right? Yeah. So for me, I love companies that are very transparent. So when I decided to kind of shift from the automotive industry, of course, they've always gotten that bad stigma, right? That it's very deceitful. <laughs> I never operated that way. But sure. for me, I wanted to go somewhere where I felt like was going to be a bigger playing field, right? I was tired of being a big fish in a little pond. I wanted to kind of play with the big Big leagues, right? Yep. So I ended up moving to T-Mobile right in 2019. And uh, it's been great ever since, right? So I've focused on the same things that I learned in school and I've been able to apply those. And, you know, we've been Northwest Arkansas, which everybody's surprised because we compete on a national level. You know, we've been ranked number one in the entire company for over a year now. Really? Right? Yeah. Just in terms of growth of new subscribers and... Yeah. So from a metric standpoint, just from overall, just an execution. So growth, uh, subscribers. Uh, now, this is just my team specifically. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly how the retail stores are doing or where they rank at. But just applying that people first and being transparent for me and my team, I've been able to grow a successful team. And you know, we work outside in the heat. I mean, we're outside 10, 12 hours sometimes. So it's not an easy job, but they love what they do because I create a great culture. I make sure I, I care about them and they love what they do. And when people do that, they're willing to work harder than just for that money, right? They're not yeah. just there. They, they're having fun. And who doesn't like winning when you're having fun as well, right? Yeah. So, you know, and I'm curious because I, I know we have a lot of people that are in business or are getting their MBA now or people, other people that are listening to this. Uh, what is one of the biggest benefits that you've experienced since getting your MBA and how has that changed? how you do business? So I would say the biggest thing is the strategic mindset. So understanding how your decisions are going to impact the business, but also understanding how the business needs to evolve and understanding the strategic process. And, and those things are vital, right? So in my role, understanding from a national level how to execute, and then also being able to tie in multiple things in that MBA. So like marketing is a big thing that I lean into personal branding, making sure that we are representing ourselves in a positive way so that we could create that positive word of mouth that's going to really give us a big organic growth. And that's been something we've kind of leaned into. But there's just so many things from an MBA standpoint that you get to apply when you run and you're running a national program and a national team is that you think differently. So when I was going to college, one of my professors, when I was getting my MBA, she's like, you know, my my goal is to get you to think like an MBA. And I didn't understand that when I was going through there. Right. But now I think that way, right? So I think about risk. I think about, am I putting my team in the best place to succeed? I'm thinking long term. So really, it's something that applies to your everyday life because you start running your life the same way. Yeah. So it really is a mind shift change. It's not necessarily just about knowing about accounting. It's really about the way that you think and the way you analyze things. So it's it's huge. Yeah. 
I mean, I think when leveraged properly, a degree in business and a master's degree in business can really take you to heights never experienced before. So, I mean, so I I don't know. I just think that's kind of cool. So let's dig into your experience with T-Mobile now. It's been a little bit more than three years. You've made it through the pandemic. I'd love for you maybe to kind of share some insider insight with our listeners. Because I think if anybody talks about it, I think that there's a lot of misunderstanding about your phone bill, your cell phone bill. And, and when you think about it now, most people don't even have a home phone anymore. Everybody's right. carrying around a cell phone and that's their primary mode of communication. But what would you, what kind of insider knowledge could you share with our listeners about one of the most utilized tools that we carry around with us, which is our phone and especially cell service? What are some things, some tips that you could give our listeners that might be valuable for them as they move forward and as they think about how they utilize their cell service? Do they have the right service? Do they maybe need to upgrade and try something different or are they getting the most bang for their buck? So... So those are all great questions. I would say the first thing is uh, so going back to kind of my my education, right? Is understanding the psychology behind we make decisions. So people are afraid of change. Yeah. The reason why is when we're so used to one thing and it works for us, we don't want to make that change, right? Mm-hmm. So a lot of things that we've kind of done is really establish talk tracks to really show empathy when we're having conversations with customers when we're meeting them. And letting them know like, hey, we understand you're hesitant. You've been with the other carriers for 10, 20 years and things are working fine, right? But I'll kind of walk you through this on a logical approach because I take a very logical approach when I do business and when I think about how to spend my money. And I think most people want to too. But unfortunately, we call kind of victim to those unconscientious biases that we have because we've been doing business for someone with so long. And you know what? Maybe it's working okay. But the biggest question I always ask people is, hey, I'm glad you're having a great experience. I'm glad that you know you're getting treated well, but how much are you paying? And if they're charging you more than we are, how well are they really taking care of you, right? Because I when I look at it now from a utility standpoint, the three major carriers have, you know, I would say coverage is very comparable. Everybody has very similar. So really it just comes down to experience and price. Yeah. So and I'm not going to say that, you know, my company is going to be the best for everybody, but you know, you got to look at your situation, see where you live, and then really analyze it from an analytical standpoint, remove that personal bias that you might have, right? And look at it logically and just say, okay, a cell phone's a cell phone. Who's going to give me the best coverage and what's going to be my best value? Because price isn't necessarily the best value. It's really all about what you get together and that value proposition that really makes it the best deal for you. So... That's what I would recommend everybody is just be open-minded, right? Sure. Uh, do some work, homework, take a look at what's going to work for you and make the best financial decision based on that because you know you have to take into account other things. I think one of the other big misconceptions that I've kind of ran into is a lot of people think you have to save money by going to prepaid, right? But when, sure. you, when you account for phone costs and when you're buying it all up front, you know, that's not comparing you know, that monthly the same way, you have to divide that overall upfront cost by 24 months because that's really what your cost is, right? Yeah. So you're uh, talking about like Mint Mobile or Cricket or some of these others? Yeah. Just any prepaid. So, okay. you know, even the ones at Walmart, yeah. any, of the, any of the ones that you have to buy your own phone, that cost is still incurred. So sure. when you're looking at it from a financial standpoint, you have to really divide that cost over how often you upgrade. If it's every two years, every three years, right? If it's a thousand dollar phone divided by 24 months, add what you're paying monthly. And that's your true cost because yeah. in a lot of the postpaid carriers, you're, you're going to get opportunity to get free devices or free promotions. And then if it's just slightly higher, that's a better value. So you have to think long-term too when you're making those decisions. But I think one of the biggest things that we're going to be seeing as far as the shift is you're going to, I think, see more competitiveness right now that we've kind of been disrupting the market for a long time is that I think it's going to get better for consumers overall. And I think it's great because competition kind of drives that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so, and I know one of the things that people, a lot of people talk about is the difference between like 2G, 3G, 5G. And, and, you know, should I really be concerned about all these different Gs that are out there as far as that's concerned? But how do you articulate that to people when they ask about, you know, is this, is this max 5G that you guys offer better than somebody else's? Or, I mean, is it, does it really make a huge difference? So it's great that you mentioned that because that is another common misconception. So the 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, 
really just represents the generation of wireless technology that we're on from a data perspective. So sure. 1G is first generation, second generation, so forth. So the easiest way for me to kind of articulate the differences and how it's evolved is when you take a look at V8 engines, right, from the early 2000s. They made maybe 300 horsepower. Well, sure. now we got V6 engines that are making more than that, right? And they're more fuel efficient. And we got V8s making five, 600 horsepower. And fuel economy hasn't gotten worse. So really, it's more of a, an efficiency standpoint that's mm -hmm. changed. So we're just seeing faster speeds, but the technology is utilized in different ways. So those engines are still internal combustion engines. We're still using spectrum to build out, you know, uh, cell towers and cell waves. So none of that's different, necessarily new. It's just new in the way that we're utilizing it. And of course, this is all the way that I interpret it. And the company is obviously not sponsoring this. So yep. these are my personal opinions. <laughs> just want to put that out there. But yeah. as far as the way that I understand it and all the research I've done on it from, and even as an outsider, right? So for me, that's the easiest way to think about it. Because a lot of people think, well, this is something brand new we just uncovered. It's really not. It's just a different way. And we're becoming more efficient with the way that it works. So, but 5G is definitely going to change things. I mean, I know that, uh, you know, I was reading a lot of articles online and this is common knowledge, no, no insider knowledge here, but, you know, they're, they're looking at how this can apply to the health industry, how this right. could change the way that operations are done or how different things are going to be changed. And if you think about how 4G changed, you know, business, the way we conduct business, I mean, at a 4G, we were able to get Uber, right? We're able yeah. to get a lot of these technology-based companies that if it wasn't for the evolution of wireless, these companies wouldn't exist. Yeah, that's true. I didn't even think about that because they wouldn't, they wouldn't have been the bandwidth available to do what they do. Right. Yeah. Can you imagine trying to do Uber Eats or something <laughs> with your flip phone? Oh my It's like, gosh. let me pull up the address. How yeah. do you even accept an order, right? <laughs> it's, so, it's or, crazy. Or Grubhub or any of those that are kind of, you know, uh, cellular based that need that wireless technology. And you kind of hit on the hit this on the head right at the beginning, right? You talked about how getting internet right at your office, you know, connected you to the world, and that's really what that does. Yeah. And the next evolution for me, my personal opinion, I feel like we're going to see a whole new wave of new businesses that are going to emerge out of this new technology because you know they're talking about self driving cars, right? I'm, I saw an article about them working on a self driving vehicle, and I think that's going to be made possible with the new generation technology. So right. things are going to change; they're going to get better. Yeah. No, that, yeah, you're absolutely right about that. And I, I agree wholeheartedly with, uh, I think, where things are going in this industry. So let's talk a little bit more about Northwest Arkansas. When you aren't busy hit, hitting the pavement with yourself and your team out there canvassing, meeting with new clients, what do you like to do here in Northwest Arkansas and why? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a great question. So I actually have six kids. Um, wow. Okay. So, yeah. So I, I got my hands full. <laughs> and he's a young looking guy, folks. So, I mean, if you, I'm, I'm sitting across from him and I know you're, you're, you're like 36, 37 or. So, yeah. So yeah. I'm 35. I'm about to turn 30, 36. Yeah. 36. Yeah. You're a young guy. That's great. So. Yeah. So I have six kids and to be honest with you, I spend a lot of time with them. Right. Okay. So the thing I love about Northwest Arkansas is that there's so many family friendly activities. So when we have spare time, you know, we go obviously to Bentonville Square. The amphitheater is a big one too that we do. Top Golf is here now, so we end up doing that. We love going to the movie theaters a lot, right? Believe it or not, we could still get movie tickets for like six dollars on Tuesdays. Oh, trust so. me, I know, <laughs> I know. I just went to see Thor with my kids. Oh, that's and, right. And, I need uh, to go tomorrow. It's Thanks good, <laughs> and uh, and and yeah, you know, it's it, we were in. Just on the side, but I was in Boston and I wanted to go see Minions with my kids while we were there. Yeah. And when I saw the adult ticket prices, I was like, forget it. It was like $20, 20 a person. Wow. And I was like, man, for 20 bucks, I think, <laughs> I think we paid like 30 bucks for me and my three and my three boys to go see Thor the other day. So I'm like, that's crazy. But, you know, again, some of the benefits of being in Northwest Arkansas that the cost of living isn't as crazy as it is, is in some other places. So absolutely. And I mean, and it's gone up just like everywhere else. Yeah, it absolutely. Has. Um, absolutely. But you know, it's still very affordable. Still, you can live very comfortably here. Definitely. And that's one thing that we always try to leverage too, is taking advantage of all those like, you know, off like those team old, or like we, we do a team old Tuesdays, like we do uh like $4 movie tickets too. So yeah. That are even off of not just Tuesdays, but other days too, that we could go, which is another reason why I love, uh, Taking advantage of that benefit as a customer, if you guys have T-Mobile, we'll definitely use that because there's a lot of free stuff we give away there. So, you know, aside from doing those things, that's really all I do. We like walking. One thing I like is that the, I would say the weather here in this area, right? So at night, it really cools down a lot. Like we get pretty warm during the day, but at sure. night, 
when the sun's setting down, like it's walkable. Like my wife and I went, we walked around the neighborhood last night and it felt very, very comfortable. And, you know, it's very, very safe. Like we live in a really safe area. So, you know, our kids walk with us too. Yeah. It's one of the ways that I try to uh, describe Northwest Arkansas because we have a lot of hills and we've got some mountainous regions and we're, you know, we are elevated, right? Mm -hmm. So when you look at topography, I mean, we are up some and- I try to explain to people all the time because people are like, oh, did, did Fayetteville ever, has Fayetteville ever been hit by a tornado? And we get them, but they don't really, they dissipate really quickly because of the topography, except for certain areas. So like what we experienced a couple of months ago is a perfect example right. of that. That tornado actually started in the Malco Razorback parking lot in Fayetteville and worked its way north to east straight up through Springdale. And it just kind of hit an area that was a patch that's just kind of not hilly. It's just kind of, it's a little flatter, but that's just the way that it is around here. But when you look at the whole topography, the Boston mountain range and all of that here in the Ozarks, you know, we are somewhat elevated. So it's not like we're in the prairie lands of Kansas or the really flat lands of, uh, of Oklahoma. So there are some differences there for people. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think if you come from the South, like Fort Smith, you actually get to see some of that visually, right? Yeah, you do. You uh, do. Which you is do. beautiful, especially driving in at night. Uh, yeah, you kind of get to see the whole view of the city because you're at the very top. Right. Uh, so that's something that's very unique. I think a lot of people, I mean, it's one of those unique experiences, right? That when you're coming back home, you're like, I'm home. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. And, you uh, see that, especially when the stadium is lit up. Yeah. Whenever that stadium is lit up red before a game or whatever, it's really cool to see if you're coming up I-49 from Fort Smith Way into Fayetteville and you see that and you get, it's, it's really nice. So, it is yeah. definitely. And like touching on weather too, what surprised me is that we get all four seasons, right? Like yeah. the fall here is beautiful. Like the winters aren't bad. The summer isn't bad either. So like we kind of get all around temperature, but if you love having all four seasons, which I do, right? Like fall is my favorite time, but I love the summer too. And the winters ain't bad either. So you get some snow, you get everything. And that's not, something that's very unique. Like in West Texas, we would get that too, but it would be like all in one day. We'd get like snow, rain, and then, you know, it's it would be crazy. And we're like, when's this going to stop? <laughs> like, yeah, this and is, then we get like insane. 30 mile an hour winds, right? Right, yeah. Uh, and no grass. Yeah. So uh, that's something that's different. And I think when you think about, you know, where you want to live, and I know this is a, a podcast really geared towards entrepreneurs and people in business is, you know, one of the biggest things is don't be afraid of moving, right? Yeah. It's something kind of that I learned with so many times that I've moved is, you know, for career progression or business opportunities, you have to be willing to relocate. And if you get the opportunity to relocate here, definitely jump on it because sure. you're not going to regret it. Uh, so many people have been transplanted here from different areas. And they're like, I really don't want to go back. Right. Or people get kind of sucked back in. I've noticed. They're like, we lived here. We left for like three years and now we're back. Yeah. I've talked, and I've actually met people that I met when I first got here that were maybe working for one of the vendors and then they left and maybe went to Atlanta or went to Cincinnati right. or someplace like that. And then they came back and they were like, yeah, we just couldn't get enough of Northwest Arkansas. So, yeah. So you experience that a lot. And I think that's, that's the cool part about it. I mean, you, it's some people call it the Walmart effect, but there is a significant aspect of Walmart and JB Hunt and Tyson and all of these companies that have had a profound impact on this area and continue to do it on a regular basis. So. Yeah, definitely. I think they call them the big three, right? Right. So like they're yes, the big, they are. the big employers here in the area. But I think what a lot of people are surprised to hear about too is, you know, we have a lot of manufacturing in this area too. From right. and not necessarily the traditional type of manufacturing, right? So we have, I think, Cargill here in this area. Mm-hmm. We right. have multiple uh, like chicken processing plants in the area. So there's really job opportunities for a lot of people and very diverse skill sets, right? So we have blue collar, white collar jobs, yeah, uh, and just a wide range. And this is a great opportunity. You know, I started a business here for someone else, but this is a great opportunity to start a business. Yeah. Right? Like uh, yeah. I read the other day that we have, you know, I think a income per capita that's high, like 10% higher than the average in the US. So a lot of people here are doing really well and there's a lot of opportunity and people are very loyal. I think that's one thing that I've really learned, right? As I've done business here the last 10 years is if you give people the right experience, you're transparent you do things the right way. They're very loyal. They're going to come back and they're going to send everybody to you, right? I right. mean, I think you just sent me a customer like a month ago. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And I just came out of the blue and I'm real big. I'm always teaching my boys about the importance of building relationships because you never know, you know, what that will lead to. You just have no idea. Like I didn't know when we met and I met you at that Starbucks that I was going to end up having you on my podcast, but after talking to you and 
just learning more about your experience and what you've been through, I was like, wow, this is, this is a great story. And it's something that I want to, you know, I want to share with my audience. So, you know, I was willing to share my platform with you just to kind of have you come on and, and kind of, you know, walk people through what you're doing. So, cause I think it's interesting and I think people need to hear that because while your story might be uniquely yours, somebody else is living something similar and deciding, well, maybe I need to go to Northwest Arkansas after I've heard what Carlos has done and he's got six kids and a beautiful wife and they're, you know, they're doing, they're making it happen there in Northwest Arkansas. Maybe that's the place for me. So. Yeah, absolutely. And I hope that that's the case. And there's different things that I've kind of learned, right? Through this process, like moving, right? I think a lot of people, that conversation doesn't get shared with them, right? Yeah. Um, You have to be willing to relocate. You got to be willing to move around and take those risks. And then you can't be complacent. So just like in business, right? Your personal career growth or your business growth, if you're complacent in what you're doing, you're going to go backwards and you're going to go out of business. So you have to always continuously look at how can I improve my business? And one thing that I've always leaned into has been the human capital aspect of it. So like, well, I'm Carlos. I'm unique. There's not a hundred Carlos's of me. So I'm going to lean into me. <laughs> right, right. And right. Uh, that's why I love making friends, right? And that's what's so great about business is that it really is about connections. It really is about people that you meet and making friends. So I've had the opportunity to stay here and meet a tremendous amount of people, have a lot of friends, a lot of connections. I mean, I have people that I've connected with here in Northwest Arkansas that I met very shortly and briefly that have built into business relationships sure, like in sure. California, New Mexico, Atlanta, Georgia. I have a friend in Pennsylvania now. So like really everywhere. I, oh, I even went to um, San Antonio recently okay. and I just flew in and I was like, hey, I have a friend that lives here. I messaged them up. We got to connect with them. But you know, if I hadn't had that experience to that perspective to be able to make those connections and focus on and putting myself out there, because believe it or not, like when I was growing up, I was deathly afraid to talk to people I didn't know. Like, like if I was asking a girl I w- out, I wouldn't believe that yeah. right now. But yeah, yeah I got you. So I hear you. If I was asking a girl out, like I had to like ask her friend and her other friend to confirm for me and like make sure that it was true. So I like yeah. I was bad in a hundred in high school. You, you were know? passing those notes around. Do you like me? Yes, no. Right, and I made sure it was a yes before I passed the note out. Right, so that's right, how risk right. adverse I was. Right. So, yeah. so coming from someone that was extremely risk adverse. Like I get it, right? It's it's difficult, especially when you're you're having to take care of kids. You you know you have responsibilities, you have you know obligations. But sometimes you know that opportunity is just waiting for you to take it. And you know, when Gracie said this, that always resonated with me. You miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Exactly. So sometimes you got to just take that shot, right? Believe in yourself because you're betting on yourself yeah. when you go into business or you're a leader in business. You're really betting on yourself to succeed, and uh, you know that work ethic, you know that drive that you have to have. And that's really where I've been able to go from different business segments and different things because where I worked at before I ended up at the car business, I didn't even work in the car business before that. All right. We grew that into the second most profitable location in the largest publicly against the largest largest publicly traded company. So we had the biggest competitor here, their backyard, and we were, you know, very small and we captured a ton of market share from them and we succeeded against them to the point where I had, you know, the CFO of our competitor sit down and try to offer me a job. Oh wow. So when you're when you think about those things, you're willing to work harder than everybody else, right? Yeah. Like success is going to be a byproduct of those. And then you create a great culture where you treat people right. I think a lot of business owners are very bottom line driven. You can't be bottom line driven when your success is tied in other people. You have to be people driven. Sure. When you invest in them, they're going to invest in your business. You're going to have a great culture. And the byproduct is that your customers are going to get taken care of better. You're going to have better retention and you're going to make more money. Like, So I'll give you an example. That's been my philosophy right at the car business and here uh, at T-Mobile. And during the last 10 years, I've had maybe two people quit. Wow. Right. That speaks volumes. Yeah. Because I always say people don't quit jobs. They quit people. Absolutely. They quit quit managers. They quit leaders. And yeah. so, and yeah, listen, I've, I've been on the, I totally understand and get that. And uh, it, it's something that's not lost on me as I do a lot of leadership training. And I'm always telling people that if, you know, people don't care how, what, you know, what you do or what you say to them, they care how you make them feel. Exactly. And it's important, you know, how, that, that you, you focus on that and you remember that because, I mean, we're all human beings. We're all here trying to you know, fight the good fight and, right. you know, and get through each day successfully and get home to our family safely. And, but it's important. It's incumbent upon you when, when you are trusted or entrusted with other people that are under your charge, that you take good care of them. 
Because if you do that, they will take ultimately good care of you. So, yeah, I, I agree 100%. I mean, that's exactly the definition of a leader, right? Is not taking care of yourself, but taking care of the people that you're entrusted with. Yeah. And making sure they succeed. So, so you have to take that focus of like, if people fail, I failed them. Right. 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 What did I do to make sure that I set them up for, for success? And that's a key part of any business. Anytime that you're running a business, starting a business, you know, you have to make sure you have the right people in the right place and that you're investing in them, mm-hmm. right? Because it's not as simple as like, well, I hired somebody here to do your job. It's okay. If they're not doing well, is it skill or is it will? Yeah. Right. And yeah. if it's skill, then did I give them the right skills, right? right? Do I need to develop those things? If it's will, then what am I doing from a culture standpoint to make sure that my people have fun, enjoy being around me and have a lot of fun, right? Because yeah. We spend a third of our day, right, driving that success or driving whatever it is that we're doing. So we have to enjoy it. I think that's super important. I think it's a big part of how you're successful in life is by making sure that you're having, uh, I think, a lot of success at work and you have a lot of success by having fun, sure. enjoying what you do, finding that passion. And I think it's important to tie people's individual goals into what the organization goals are because people don't want to fill other people's dreams, right? They want to know what's my dream and how do I fit into that bigger picture? Yeah. So understanding that too and making people get involved is something I learned in business school is that it's hard to sell someone on your dream. Right? Yeah. And there's another business lesson I have with some business owners that I know because I actually know a lot of the business owners here and also in other areas. And one thing they always talk about is, why don't people work as hard as me? And one thing that I always had to tell them is like, well, they don't have that equity that you do, right? right. So you can't expect <laughs> them to, right? Yeah. You... Yeah. uh You've you got skin in the game exactly, they don't have. Right. So. Exactly. So you're trying... And not only that, this is your dream. This is something that you're trying to build. And they're, they're maybe, maybe their dream is not doing this. Maybe yeah. their dream is doing something else. But how does the current job fit into that bigger picture? And how do I get them involved in that decision making to where we can build them towards that success? Because Absolutely. sometimes it's not about keeping people for 30 or 40 years in the same role. Sometimes your, your company could be that journey for the person that ends up ultimately going where they want to be. And if that's your, uh, I would say your position or the way that you view things, you're going to have a tremendous amount of success and you're going to get a lot of people where they need to go to. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, I mean, you are preaching to the choir and I talk about it all the time. And, and it's, it's one of the reasons why I encourage firms that have the bandwidth to do it is to give each of their employees a little space and margin to work on some things that they really want to work on. It's the one reason why Google gives people 20% of their work time to work on their own pet projects. That's how Gmail came about. That's how Google Maps came about. I mean, it's not an, you know, it's not a mystery why Google has been successful. They have gone out and set the bar so high and they've also enabled their people to dream as well in the process, right? So yeah, Ser- Sergey and and um and the other the other owner have their dreams for what they want uh, Google to be or Alphabet or whatever you want to call it. But then they know that everybody that's employed under them has dreams too. And it may not necessarily, like you said, line up perfectly with what Sergey and, and his uh, partner's uh, dreams are, but they create margin enough for them to find what's important for them and give them the time and the opportunity to do it and even some of the support. And then look what happens. Yeah, and you know, and Google is one of those places where everybody wants to work at. And the thing that you noticed you didn't touch on was like, well, the free food, right? Yeah. Or this, I mean, that's just a, that's and, just an extra. I those, mean, I yeah, yeah, those are nice, but exactly right. So a lot of business owners, when they look at these big companies, they're like, "Why I can't afford to spend that money? I can't afford to give people free food, free naps, right? Free places to stay." And, <laughs> right. and, and we get that, right? Like yeah. If you're starting a business or you're a medium sized business or a small business, right? You're looking at that bottom line, and you're obviously wanting to stay cash flow positive. You're not wanting to burn through a lot of things. So, but what you mentioned doesn't cost money. Right. right. It's all about the way that you create your culture from a top down perspective. Sure. And it's all starts there. Right. It's all about caring about people. And I'll give you a prime example. I worked for uh, someone that used to be a big executive for a big, big Fortune 50 company. And when he, I had to sit down conversation with them in his office, I was working for him as I was growing this business for him. And he uh, wanted me to write someone up that was very, very hardworking, stayed late all the time, but his wife had gotten a flat tire on the side of the road and he was late for work that day. 
And he's like, where is he at? Why is he not here? Hey, when he gets here, I need you to write him up. And I'm like, I'm not writing him up. <laughs> no. I'm like, I'm not writing him up. I said, do you know he stays late? He works hard. He has a great attitude. I'm like, do you know what that would do? Yeah. For, it to would take demoralize care. him, right. to be honest he would, with He you. would find another job so fast and yeah. I wouldn't blame him, right? Yeah. So sometimes it's also our responsibility to be able to tell the people that are above us to say, no, I'm not doing that. This is why I'm not doing that. And we have to be that change in that culture because I'm sure there's a lot of people listening that are like, man, well, I don't get to make those choices. but you really do. You get to make that culture, your team that you're leading, or if you're a team member, right? You can help create that culture. You can always coach up to your leader, right? Ask questions, create a better work environment for you. And it all starts with having that conversation and also not allowing those things to, I would say, fester and and be negative in the work environment. Because I mean, it doesn't matter what you do. If you focus on people and taking care of them and and investing in them, they're going to have fun. Sure. I mean... I work outside, like I mentioned, 12 hours a day. It's hot. I mean, work at fairs, festivals. We do a lot of outside events. I mean, I'm very sunburned. I don't even like being outside. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, but I enjoy meeting people and I enjoy leading my team and I enjoy the fact that we're making an impact. So for me, my focus has always been like, if I can help people save money right now with the inflation going up yeah. and people just, right, they're not aware of who we are, what we can do or what that proposition is from a value perspective. So if I can be out there and I can talk to some people, if I can save someone two, three hundred dollars a year, I mean that's thirty six hundred dollars every ten months. I mean that's a vacation. That's a lot. I mean that's, that's a, lot a lot of money, right? Yeah. So yeah. for me, my purpose is that and you know, I ask my team, hey, what do you what do you guys want to do? And a lot of them talk about, hey, well, we want to help people. We don't want this just to be a job. We want a purpose behind it. Yeah. And that's their focus too. And when we frame everything in that perspective, we have a tremendous amount of success. So Yeah. Well, listen, you me meeting you saved me eighty three dollars and thirty three cents a month <laughs> based on the decision that I made to go with your uh your mobile unit for the internet versus what I was going to get if I ever got it. Cause I don't know when the files was going right. to, when, when the, um, the fiber optic was going to be installed. So I'm thankful for that. And, and, you know, like I said, you're, you guys are, you guys are doing a great job. So certainly keep that up. And I really appreciate you coming out and, uh, and connecting with us here on the podcast. If anybody wants to get connected with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah. So I have a direct line. They can actually message me if they want to reach out to me, whether it's anything that we talked about, or they just like to ask any further questions. I think I gave it to you. It's at 479-391-9217. Yeah. Feel free to text me or call me anytime. I would love to discuss anything as far as my personal journey or if you'd like to just know about you know, service or products, anything that I'm doing. Yeah. yeah now just yeah. keep in mind, this isn't a sponsored podcast. No, it's not. So. It's not, it's not uh, at all. But, but <laughs> that was one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on. And I actually am going to make an announcement and share with you guys, you guys being the listeners of the podcast that I'm working on something with Carlos where we can do something special for the listeners of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast, where you guys can get a discount off your service and take advantage of that Magenta Max program that they have where the speeds are just off the chart. And, you know, it just, it's really widely available here in this area. And so it's something that you can take advantage of. And it's actually what I've been experiencing with the hotspot that I have. And there's just a lot of options available. So certainly We'll figure out a way to get you connected with Carlos and his team if you have a need for that, or if you're a business and you want to move your cellular service over to them. But this really is not, and that's probably going to be the title of this episode. This podcast <laughs> episode is not sponsored by T-Mobile. No. So, no, you know, not. this is really just a story. It's two guys sitting here chopping it up, talking about our experiences coming here to Northwest Arkansas. And I think Carlos has given you a really good idea of what it was like for a young person like himself to come here, to cut his teeth in business, to get an MBA in the process. And six kids, folks, six kids. Listen, I'm praying for he and his wife because I know (laughs) what it's like with three and I'm already outnumbered. So, I mean, you know, once you have more than two kids, you are already playing zone. You know, it's like man to man goes out the window. You're just like, look, I'm going to do what I can. You do what you can over there and let's hope for the best. So, yeah, absolutely. So my church, you know, they told me that God gives us kids so we are not selfish, right? Right. So I, I'm really, I'm really not selfish because I have six kids I got to take care of and they come first. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but, absolutely. Uh, you know, one thing we didn't even touch on was really the outdoors activities, right? Like there's hiking, biking, trail. Everything. Like, I mean, everything. there's so many 5Ks that we go to that we do for, uh, for sponsorships as a company. And there's a ton of people that go and do that. So 
I wish I was physically more active because I should be, right? <laughs> Especially be, now man. that I'm 35. Get... Thanks for telling everybody how old I am. <laughs> Appreciate that. But uh, if you guys see me, I'm 25. Yeah. Um, but really, there is a lot of things that you could do to really stay active. And sure. I think that's something people love. Like I had a coworker come from Dallas and he's like, man, it's so beautiful here. And yeah. I could do so many activities. Yeah. We have those bike trails that run from like Bentonville. To Hundreds of miles of bike trails, it's mountain crazy. bike trails, gravel roads, yeah. off road. You, I mean, that's the one thing that's great. And we would, I was talking about it on another podcast recently with the folks from Trailblazers Plus Ethic. We were talking about the fact that for people that especially ride bikes, right? The two biggest fears that people have, a, a lot of people, there, there are a subset of adults that don't know how to ride a bike. And their major concern when it comes to it is safety, road safety, and just the simple fact of having access to a bicycle. And we offer both of those because a lot of our trails have no roads involved whatsoever. So we've got a little bit of everything for anybody that's listening to this that wants to get out and really get active. So whether you're coming from Dallas, you're coming from New York or San Francisco or Wichita, we've got something for you here in Northwest Arkansas. Absolutely, we do. And the people are phenomenal. So you'll get to meet a lot of people, amazing people like Randy here. So <laughs> Well, thank you. I, the check is in the mail, my friend. I, so, I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, he, he is Carlos Rosas and I am Randy Wilburn. And you've been listening to the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. Carlos, thanks so much for coming on. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Well, there you have it, folks. Another episode of the podcast. I hope you enjoyed that. Remember, our podcast comes out every Monday, rain or shine. Please, do me a favor. If you listen to this podcast, check it out on Apple Podcasts and give us a rating or a review. Let us know what you like about the podcast, what you don't like about it. Give us some feedback because we're continuing to innovate and add new things to the podcast to make it exciting. And that's why we like doing episodes like this one where we bring on just regular folks and, and tell their story here on the podcast. So, you know, we are, you know, our, my platform is your platform. So if you've got an interesting story to share, let us know. Reach out to us here at I Am Northwest Arkansas. You can shoot me an email to randy at I Am Northwest Arkansas.com and I'd love to chat with you further about that. That's all the time that we have today. I will see you here next week. Peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week, available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas.